Australian Textiles Manufacturing Malaysia is the leading ISO accredited textiles recovery facility in Asia Pacific. Our primary goal is to divert textiles from landfill and empower local communities through charity by providing work opportunities, challenging the stigma that is associated with textiles recovery and recycling, making it transparent and clear to all. Our logistics centre is in place to offer accountability and to report our figures for municipal and nationwide statistics. The factory is fully equipped with heavy machinery to ensure that there is no manual handling of our items for our workers. We bail the donated goods to ensure the items stay dry and organised. As simple as this seems, the majority of facilities overlook this aspect, wasting tons of potentially good material. The bales are then placed on the start of our conveyor, where the plastic and paper are separated, ready to be sent to our recycling partners, diverting them from landfill. We take the United Nations SDG goal seriously, and we're currently contributing to 15 out of 17 goals. Once the items hit the conveyor, we have a highly skilled team of sorters who each identify specific items by their type and place them in their trolleys, ready for their next stage of processing. We believe in the five R's of textile recycling, which is refuse, refusing to buy clothes that are not responsibly made or needed, reduce, Reducing the number of clothes we buy and wear, reuse, putting clothes back into the circular economy by prolonging its lifespan, renew, repairing and mending clothes, reviving discarded materials or repurposing them into new items. And finally, recycle. If a garment or textiles is not suitable for any of the other options, recycling can involve converting old textiles into raw materials for other industries. Once the items have gone through the initial processing, they are then brought over to the sorting table where they are classified into 500 different categories. Depending on the condition and the type of the item, it will then either go back into reuse or into one of our many recovery processes. The absorbent materials such as cotton, fleece and linen that is not suitable for reuse will be cut down by our team of experienced workers. This cleaning cloth is suitable for industrial and commercial purposes and is a sustainable alternative to using virgin materials. After it has been transformed into cleaning cloth, it is then processed through multiple metal detectors so that our cloths do not scratch the surfaces that they wipe. Once they are cleared for use, the cleaning cloth is then sent for baling. We use machinery to provide consistency and to be more efficient for logistics. Recycled cleaning cloth is more absorbent than new material due to the number of times that they've already been washed, making them softer and more absorbent. They also significantly reduce the risk of bleeding with solvents and chemicals when compared to new material. Finally, the belled cleaning cloth is then placed on a pallet, ready to be exported to our partners, Statewide Cleaning Cloth Australia, who recently received accreditation in accordance with the Clothing Reuse Export Scheme under Charitable Recycling Australia. We also bail the clothes for reuse using a similar method. Clothes for reuse have a big positive social and environmental impact. They reduce carbon emissions and save lots of resources including water and energy. Cotton production requires vast amounts of water, fertilizers and pesticides. According to the World Wildlife Fund, it takes 20,000 litres of water to produce just one kilogram of cotton, equivalent to a single t-shirt and a pair of jeans. By extending the life of clothes through reuse, individuals can reduce the demand for new clothes thereby reducing the pressure on natural resources. We welcome groups from around the world to come and tour our factory, whether that be corporations and councils or local designers and universities. Dale Warren from ATM. We have uh, here with us a group of young ladies who are design students in the fashion industry that come from all over the world, some from China, some from Indonesia, 
uh, and Singapore to go through our uh, Beyond the Bin tour where they come to see what actually happens with textiles and the recovery solutions that we have. So that they can then share that information with other people around their community and that makes real change. And because they're in the fashion industry, these ladies will end up being executives at some point of time in the different parts of the industry and they will have their experiences that they can draw on that are real life to be able to make a change. So we encourage people to come here and be involved in the textile industry to see what recovery solutions there are. Our parent company, Statewide Cleaning Cloth Australia, who founded Australian Textiles Manufacturing Malaysia, supports many charities in Asia Pacific. So far, SCCA has paid over 60 million Australian dollars to support their causes and projects. Textiles recycling and recovery is perceived as one of the key directions needed for sustainable transition of the sector. By responding to a rising recognition that the industry should be responsible to reduce its pressure on raw resources in the face of a growing global population, charities have seen the significance and the benefits of adopting a textile recovery as part of their business model. We also adopt repairing and refurbishing of discarded goods as part of our process to add value to the items and to extend their lifespan. For the items that cannot be repaired, we deconstruct them in-house, removing zips, buttons and accessories to be used in our upcycle products. One of the processes that we've incorporated into our day-to-day -day production is upcycling. Upcycling clothes is making new pieces of clothing by cutting and sewing used garments and other textiles, giving them a new life and extending the time that they get used. We have an in-factory first aid department fully equipped with oxygen tanks, stretchers and wheelchairs. Our industrial kitchen, managed by our experienced cooks, provides breakfast and lunch for all of our employees. We also provide off-site hostels and transport to and from work for all of our workers. Hi, I'm Andrew and I'm in charge of the ATM and ESG targets. We have policies in place to inform the public about our 5R activities. We accomplish this through our community awareness programs and with tight collaborations with educational institutions, government agencies, non-profit organisations and business enterprises that care about the environment. And our group of companies, which includes SCCA Group in Australia, is significantly changing how people think about used clothing. We have formed numerous collaborations in the whole circular economy during the past five years. Here is a small part of that story. Waste isn't part of our vocabulary. An ATMM completely recycles every single item it receives from the charities. Most unwanted textiles can be reused and the remainder can be given new life, a fresh appearance and renovation in one way or another. Here's how. When you enter our freshly outfitted u for b plant, you'll notice behind me that textiles that are no longer suitable for reuse have been sorted to manufacture up to 35 different types of upcycled products, including bags, pet bags, and caps. On the table behind me, this is where the suitable items are cut in order to create our u for b items. As we travel down the line, you'll notice that the cutting is done on site and the cut material is folded and bundled where they're then sent to a crew of up to 50 people who are home sewers. This not only helps give a number of everyday people within the community by giving them a much needed income, but it also helps us maintain consistency in our designs and provides us the opportunity to reduce our textile waste as our home sewing network isn't overburdened with leftover fabric. Before new designs go live, our in-house sewers are on site to address any potential difficulties. We collaborate closely with reputable local fashion design universities who assist us with the pattern making. The offcuts from this process are then sent to India where it is mechanically separated into strips and yarn where our family of artisans hand weave them into attractive floor mats. Here are a few of the examples. The finished goods are then purchased back by ATMM and distributed globally once more giving many people the much needed financial support. 
Behind me is our ESG board. We take the United Nations SDG goals seriously and work with partners who align with the same core values. So it's first collected by the charities, then sent to our zero waste ISO accredited factory, sorted into 500 different categories, and then the suitable items for upcycling are then made where we then sell it back to the charities to support the ecosystem as a whole. This is our Euphobi restoration area where we refurbish and restore handbags, hats and shoes to breathe new life into them, extending their usefulness and ultimately saving them from landfill. All footwear is processed in the Euphobi area where they are paired and graded. It is our objective to put as many shoes back into the reuse market and we are a founding partner of a one-of-a-kind program in Malaysia where rubberized shoes such as sneakers and slippers can be grinded to replace SBR tire granules. Crumb footwear has a wide variety of applications for industrial and commercial use, from astroturf infill to running tracks and children's playgrounds. As the demand for reuse items grow, we hope to be able to keep up with the orders. With the support of charities in Australia via SCCA, we hope to improve the use of secondhand textiles, with sales of this product returning to the charities themselves, once again providing much needed funds for community projects and benefiting the people who live within it. At our factory, we have an on-site retail store called Best Bundle. We believe in the power of reuse and giving clothes a second chance. We know that keeping clothes in reuse is not only trendy, but it's also crucial for a sustainable future. When you shop at Best Bundle, you're not just buying clothes, you're making a positive impact on the environment. Our dedicated team carefully selects and prepares quality items so you can look stylish whilst reducing your carbon footprint. Best Bundle offers more than just shopping. Our on-site cafeteria is a perfect spot to refuel and relax after a successful shopping spree. Enjoy delicious meals and refreshing beverages whilst you take a break from finding your next fashion treasure. And for our little shoppers, we have a children's playground which includes a bouncy castle. We bring in local and international talent to perform whilst the shop is open. Best Bundle is a place where the entire family can have fun. We promote our Upcycle for Better products at our Best Bundle store, working towards circularity in the textiles recovery industry. We are part of a global collaboration that targets to reduce textile waste, minimize the use of natural resources and provide an opportunity within the community.
Mr. Dale Warren, CEO of ATMM, is interviewed here and asks some difficult questions about the second-hand textile recovery system and the way he sees the future of the industry. Hi, I'm Andrew Jackson, Head of Business Development for Upcycle for Better. I'm here today with Mr. Dale Warren from Australian Textiles Manufacturing Malaysia. Um, and we've got a few questions just to be able to go through today with you, Dale. So how are you doing? Good. How are you, mate? Yeah, doing great. Thank you. So, Mr. Warren, textiles recycling has gained significant attention in recent years due to its environmental impact. Could you provide us with an overview of the current state of the textile recycling industry? Yeah. So we work in the textile recycling industry, or we call it textile recovery industry, to be able to re reclaim materials that are no longer wanted. In my experience, a lot of people are working in the same sector, have a lot of interest in the sector, but they haven't got the practical experience or the knowledge about what happens in the industry. And the elephant in the room is that to be effective for textile recovery, you need to change the numbers. And a lot of the programs that I see happening are very uh, window dressing, so they're, they're, they're an example of what can happen, but they're not actually working in practice that are making a difference to the volume that needs to be done to compete with the, man, the amount that's being consumed. And how has the demand for textiles recycling uh, evolved over time? Um, what factors have contributed to its growth? The demand has changed in line with consumption, so people still want to have a better outlook, better lifestyle, they want to dress well, all those sorts of things are still current. They're not going to change. So the demand for people to buy new clothing is still going to be there. But the way the world deals with recovery of textiles and to redistribute those wearable items to other parts of the world it needs to be better. It's not done well. It's interesting to see how various factors converge to fuel this industry's growth. Could you share or shed some light on the process of textile recycling? Like how does ATMM contribute to this process? Okay, so with, um, again, with textile recovery, we believe in five R's, right? Five R's of recycling. We don't just do one. So with, um, we, we believe that to be effective, the community needs to be aware of one, what's happening. Not, not be in a, in a, treated like mushrooms where they don't know what's going on. If they're aware, then they will change their behaviours. So the things that, that um, they were doing, they will stop. So we have different programs with different people to try to improve the quality of the material that's recycled, that we collect. The more virgin it, re that it gets from the person, the consumer, into a processing facility, the better it'll be be able to be recycled. If it's, a, if it's material that's been put in a general waste collection system, well you won't recover the textiles, it won't work. And we work with different government bodies to see whether, where we can improve their collection system. I believe you have made key partnerships and collaborations with local design institutes, uh, fashion academies and local designers. Um, where you have actually displayed some of these upcycled and recycled clothes um, in all parts of the world. Could you go a little bit more into detail with that? Yeah, so what happens with the clothing that we get, which primarily comes out of the charity system, um, there's a lot of interest with young people to rework those items into other items so that they can rewear them. The fashion industry now has a lot of celebrities that instead of buying a new gown will bring back the gowns that they've worn six years, eight years ago and re-wear them as a, instead of purchasing a new one. And it's possible with uh, clothing to rework it, to remake it, redesign it. And um, a lot of interest is from local designers uh, in any country that are interested in doing that work. They need a platform where they can get the material. So what they do is they come to our facility, they'll get, go through, sort material that they um, can rework, and they then, we then help with that journey for them to display that in fashion shows. So um, we've done that at a local level with universities, they'll do their own fashion show, 
um, and we also do it with uh, recognised fashion brands and one of which is the KL Fashion Week. So we're part of their sustainability section. And what that does is just drive interest in retaining value in the clothing that perhaps someone else has thought of that clothing as it is, is no longer any of value. But if a designer can get hold of it, they can rework that and make it look something amazing. One particular show, we, we had uh, dresses which would originally come from uh, Australia and those dresses were repurposed, redesigned, and then they were taken to Paris and shown on the catwalk in, in Paris, in, in Louvre. And we had representatives that are interested parties in, in textile recycling from the royal families of Cambodia and, and Malaysia. And also we had the, the Australian Embassy uh, send in a representative there to be part of that. Um, exhibition of how we can rework materials instead of them ending up in landfill. So in this journey of your company being ISO certified and accredited, um, why is it that you did that? We did that because we felt that the, the whole industry is looking for transparency and um, the supply chain um, process needs to be verified and we have gone down that journey not because we need to to operate currently but we feel that's the way of the future. One of the processes you have gone into is uh, granulating shoes. Could you expand upon that a little bit? Yeah so with footwear they at some point of time they'll reach their usable life. They're not going to last forever and the, if they're a rubberized sole that sole has another purpose in that it can be ground up and that granules can be used for playground services or running tracks. So reuse is always the first option, which is so if, if you've got clothing and you, and you donate it to a charity, they will do that. They're very effective at doing that. Um, but then if the shoot, they're not, they need to be partnered with our, our recovery system so that then if it goes beyond what they can do locally, they can then be part of a more global situation where they can then, that material is uh, gathered from many points, not just from one location, and is put together in an economically substantial enough volume that can then be processed. The problem with um, the virgin material that people collect, you know, they'd have farms of cotton, farms of trees, all sorts of raw materials are farmed in volume. They're not farmed, you know, one cotton plant over here and another cotton plant over there. They're all pulled together and that makes it economically more sustainable. Um, and it's the same for recycling. You need to pull those resources together so that you can deal with them economically. Education plays a key part in how textiles will move in the future. Um, could you give a little bit more information on the collaborations that you've done and some of the projects that you've done with the local schools and universities to be able to raise that awareness for textile recycling and recovery. Yep, we have um, agreements with three universities here in Malaysia. So they bring their design students in textile to the factory and as part of their curriculum, they have um, designed a program where they will work with um, uh, materials that are of no longer any value and they will remake those materials into something else and they'll do a fashion show as part of that curriculum. We are involved with going into those uh, areas and talking about textiles and what, how much water is used, how much the manufacturing process takes, uh, where it's done so that they can then be responsible with their clothing and their choices about how they buy and use textiles. You've mentioned in this interview uh, about the five R's of textile recycling. Could you go into a bit more detail about that and how ATMM uh, actually plays a role in that? Yep, well, we believe in uh, reduce, refuse, rethink, reuse, renew, or recycle, all five. And the first two are, are educational based in that you need to rethink what you're buying and not buy so much. Uh, and if you're buying something, buy something that's sustainable where you can, that can be re redesigned into something else. Uh, and then the reuse, which is very common, what people understand textile recovery is, is, is purely reuse, but it's a lot bigger than that. And then the um, 
renew, which we do for refurbishing of materials or using shoe granules into playgrounds. Um, the, uh, and then the recycling is to convert a material into another form. What are the economic benefits of an Australian textiles recovery program and system? Well, Statewide Cleaning Cloths Australia have contributed $60 million to um, the charitable network for materials that they deemed that they no longer could have any use for. And uh, to do that, as well as paying out the money, they've also provided a logistics network for free, which would be four times or even more expensive than the money that they've already contributed. So, so that assists the charity network to operate efficiently. And, uh, and those materials don't end up in landfill. They get recycled and recovered the best possible way they can. If you've got materials, you donate them to a charity shop. And then if you can't do that, then find a, a collection point where you can donate those materials to. And then they will end up into a responsible, that ends up in a responsible recovery system. And then those materials will be sorted for best use or recycled or upcycled. Is that common in the textile recovery industry? It's not that common. Um, to, people tend, they, to do what we do, you have to be able to deal with the volume of material and um, a lot of people can't handle the volume. So what sort of things are you implementing in your practices that adds to that credibility or accountability to give the people that you work with um, reassurance that you are, you are doing things in the right way? We have visitors come here and we're open to our partners to come and visit the complex because it's all very good just talking to them and sending them a message, but there's nothing like just being in the factory and seeing what we do. Thank you so much for joining us today and giving us a much needed insight into what happens in textile recovery and recycling. Are there any closing remarks or anything you'd like to say to all the people out there? Yes, thank you, Andrew. What I'd like to say is that clothing is a manufactured product that's done on a global scale and that recovery of textiles is also a, a, pro, a process that operates on a global scale if it's to be done efficiently. In a local context, the recovery of textiles is done very well by the charitable sector and we have a great partners with SSCA, we have the charities and we have other interested parties that we work with. Everyone is very passionate about doing the right thing that in our supply chain, what we work with. And we are conscious of maintaining the integrity of what they do and also doing the responsible thing on our end. And we are very proud of the group of people we work with and we want to continue that collaboration and we want to expand our effectiveness so that we can help save the planet for not only ourselves but also for future generations because textile recovery is not done well in a lot of places and we can do it better. And there's a lot more that can be done than with that material than currently is being done. And we believe we are the right solution to help reduce the pollution.